if you know some alien species with advanced technology comes down and takes control of our cities, we can use asymmetrical warfare to defeat them. Uh, and that's only if they do, uh, don't want to use weapons of mass destruction. They can just nuke us from orbit. We're screwed. <clears throat> Surprising we haven't used nukes apart from that one time. One time. Well, I'm glad we haven't. Yeah. Nukes are horrible. I don't know. Maybe they're not even real. <laughs> I'm Oz. And? Oh, and. Well. And this is Shad. And welcome. Back. And welcome. And and welcome, Nathan. Thank you. And and we are Nightly Watch. We're Night's Watch. And this is Nightly News. You got there. You got through it. I'm proud of you, Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Your job's done here now. Yeah, okay. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Okay. Um, yeah. We're Nightly News. What do we do? We talk about the news, don't, we don't report it. No, we're not news. We're well, not a news source. But that's weird though, we're called Nightly News. Because we talk about the news that we hear nightly through the week and then talk about it. Is that true? Can you can you confirm yeah. that? Yeah, we talk about okay. the news. Okay, so that hasn't been debunked. Excellent. No, no. <laughs> the myth is not busted yet. Okay. <laughs> that was a great show while it lasted. All right. So, first bit of news. First bit of news, something really important happened. Something so I, very uh, significant. Yeah, there's like, a new like, Pokemon. Oh, yeah. That is, well, you're wow, right, that is it's significant. earth shattering, man. <laughs> it's earth shattering, dude. Like, there's two sides. To, what's it? It's, it's Scarlet and Violet. And Violet, dude. Two sides to like the Scarlet Violet conflict. Mm -hmm. Who will come out on top? It's pretty. Yeah. This massive Pokemon, Pokemon conflict. Who will win? Scarlet or Violet? Red or Blue? Well, it's not necessarily the Pokemon that you use, it's how you use them. And I also think environment plays a big role in it yes, as well. Yes, yes. Like, fight, having Pokemon battles in cities, mm. it can be really difficult. Mm. Mm. And it's, it's got to the point that even the really large Pokemon can be defeated by a small Pokemon who just gets a good shot in. Yeah. yeah, but that's the thing, man. It's like overwhelming force. Eventually, you can wear them down. Well, that's only if the Pokemon, Pokemon are willing down. to use their massive destructive attacks. Well, depends on how you what you mean. But that's massive. pretty crazy. You'd have to be that would be insanely extreme. Like, have you seen the type of stuff Pikachu can just throw out at when, when Pikachu, that thing wants? Man. That's a weapon of mass destruction. Yeah, well... Pokemon should be regulated at that dangerous. It's like just giving them to little kids to train ten -year -olds. when they're port when they're portable weapons of mass destruction. Well, wait a minute. Some of them even use chemical warfare. What about the monopoly of force? Why should why should a particular authority be able to choose who gets Pokemon and who doesn't? Because what if they're like, okay, well, you know what? No one gets Pokemon except us, and we can do whatever we want to you. It's true, but I, I think giving them to kids that are too young might be a bit dangerous. What about to just adults? No, uh, you know, uh, maybe. Depends. Can they Dynamax them? <clears throat> You've gone... Yeah. A okay. In you just got to the next level. <laughs> no assault Pokemon, okay? No assault Pokemon. Because it's yes. on shield. There's uh, especially, especially the um, the sorry to cut you off there. The, the, the what? The 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 automatic Pokeballs. Those things are just. Whoo, yep. Whoo. But no, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, you can Dynamax them, which Dynamax. means that they go massive, like Megaton, me me like. Like world Mass, ending, yeah, world ending, mutually assured the destruction, arena. and there's like the little trainers here, and the massive Pokemon's that go, and then they shoot at each other. It's dangerous. Yeah, Pokemon are dangerous. Yeah. Like, my goodness. Yeah. All right, so there is a new Pokemon game though, right? Mm. <laughs> That's what so, we've been talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but just imagine, okay, for those who don't care about Pokemon, imagine your favorite game, okay? Mm -hmm. Imagine Dragon's Dogma Shad. Oh. And they made a brand new one. A dragon's dog one. Give me one I can relate to. Sorry. Halo. Oh! <laughs> my, my shoe actually fell off today. <laughs> but, okay, imagine, now we know what that's like. Imagine a brand new dragon's dogma. I didn't <laughs> Chad. What are you doing? <laughs> I almost did. Your shoe fell off. All right. <laughs> imagine a new dragon's dogma or Halo. It's everything you ever wanted. You've been asking for years and years from the devs to give you this. Oh. And they give it to you. Okay, oh. comes out January, it's March, and they announce a sequel for the end of the year. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's what this announcement for this game is. Wow. We got a game earlier this year that was wow. Chef's Kiss, 
and then they're doing a sequel, you not know, a sequel, but a, a new title. You're a smart man. Framing that in the way for realms of Dragon's Dogma yeah. got me to understand that so completely. Yeah. I am dying for a Dragon's Dogma sequel, but I'm so worried they're going to screw it now. It's been so long. I think they might just try and capitalize off the cult following the game has developed over the years. Mm. Chuck its name on some... Like Souls-like clone? Skin suit piece of junk and... Uh, yeah, but as long as you can, as long as you can play as uh, sexy type B body, that'll be great. No, 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 it's not enough. I need a good game. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I like the sexy bodies. You mean type B? <laughs> no, I mean like like both. I want I want my heroic characters, both male and female, to look awesome and heroic and beautiful. But hey, did you you were playing it too? Type B. You see? I know, no, that was that's happening with a few games. Someone noticed. The only mm -hmm. game it didn't happen with was a Chinese game. It, it's weird. Usually, Japanese games are based in the like they still have uh, you know. Well, actually, well, I was going to say a lot of Japanese properties are unashamedly like um, sexify their games and stuff. Mm. Dark Souls character creator does not make that easy, and the body types that they give you yeah. just look awful. It's a balancing act. But some of the NPCs are made clearly to look very beautiful. Mm. Like, you know, if you look at the facial structure of the girl in the hood on um, uh, uh, Elden Ring, this is a very, you know, pretty, you know, pretty face, right? Mm. Um, but then they don't... <laughs> it's so hard! Like, I did a... Um, uh, a stream, the Elden Ring stream on Shadowversity, and we spent a decent amount of time in character creation just trying to... <laughs> Good I, hour and a bit. I, I've since, you know, been playing Elden Ring, and I devoted another hour or more, and I think I got like a half... It's a big improvement from what I had, and it's almost there. There was um, someone who commented... There's a few comments on the stream where it's like perfect comedic cut between when you are customizing your thing like it's me doing this massive <laughs> fight and then it's like cut you like oh the nose is terrible <laughs> Stuff so like that. flat but also there's a lot of other comments saying i'm glad i'm not the only one who gets obsessed about character education yeah. there's a lot of people they they found you know their own kind in me <laughs> but yeah. it was like character education is important to a lot of people in fact we have a, so I have some additional thoughts on Elden Ring that we might want to discuss because yeah. um, about the game is phenomenal. I really like it, but it leaves a lot to be desired in other areas and not necessarily catered for. I get that, mm. but it would improve it a lot more for people who appreciate other elements of gameplay. So far, it's game of the year for me. So far, probably yeah. It's too early in the year, but we haven't had that many things come out. Like Elden Ring's been hyped up for years now. With the whole George R. R. Martin yeah. stuff. And we are early in the year, that's true. Yeah, yeah. They gave us so much content. But it is a very good piece of artwork. I wouldn't be surprised if people have it as their game of the year because... The gameplay is just rock solid. Mm -hmm. Like, phenomenal. But it's interesting how you brought up Dragon's Dogma before. To me, Dragon's Dogma is a vastly superior game to any Souls game ever made. I haven't played it, but you're so hyped about it, Shad. I feel like I, I yeah, need Dragon's to Yeah, Because not only does it have... Demon Souls like combat, really brutal combat. Mm. The combat's more versatile. Um, the, you need more creative ways to defeat your opponents, and there's more uh, diverse weaknesses of enemies in Dragon's Dogma. Uh, the climbing mechanic on monsters is just phenomenal. That's cool. It has it, the story is not great, but it has a vastly better story than uh, um, like, like the Elden Ring story is like hidden behind. Uh, yeah, but there's yeah. so much porn in it. What porn? There's pawns. Pawns. <laughs> the, the, your followers are called pawns. Yeah. Which is a great system. Like, the follower system is awesome. The character creation is just uh, unbelievable. The diversity in equipment and loadouts you can do. The uh, character classes and skill. Uh, Dragon's Dogma, to me, is still best game ever made. Like, it, they, I'm sorry, but Dragon's Dogma isn't Halo 2. It's uh, so much better. Um, there are other games that do better in story and quests and stuff, like Skyrim and things. Um, uh, and so Dragon's Dogma could be improved, I'm not saying it can't, but out of doing so many things really good, yes, and I would even say it does even more, uh, it d delivers more gameplay immersion uh, than even um, uh, Souls games. But on balance, the Souls uh, combat is really good. Second to none. Really, really good. If I was just judged on combat, because Dragon's Dogma combat is also really good, like really good. It's been compared to Souls, yeah, but more uh, expansive, more versatility. Hmm. Um, I think Dragon's Dogma. I prefer Dragon's Dogma combat. 
I do. I'm sorry, but I, uh, I, I disagree. I, have you played Dragon's Dogma? Yes. Uh, have you? Oh, you I tried a little bit when we were streaming. I wasn't into it. Not my thing, personally. I, I understand, like, the climbing mechanic is great, though. Mm -hmm. They should have that in Dark Souls, but they don't. Um, mm -hmm. Alright, so, on to next bit of world news. Um, global news. Global news, yeah. Uh, like, this affects everyone, and we should be really concerned about it. Yeah. yeah. Steam Deck came out. So, you're right, that is very concerned, like serious yeah. stuff to consider. Uh, do you know much about the Steam Deck? Yeah, I actually really uh, want one now. Oh really? I assume this is the type of thing Nathan would uh, look into. See, at first I was like, uh, it's just a portable PC, PC. Yeah. And I was like, I've already got a computer, I don't go anywhere, but the more I play my Switch in bed and become lazier and, and more horizontal, the less I want to go on my PC <laughs> to play games. You, and you are following the true path of uh, adulthood here. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm going to sit my desk when I, I know, it's just like, you get more lazy as you get older you get. This is true. Yeah, and uh, Gabe Newell apparently hand-delivered them. Could have been Gabe Newell, could have been a fat guy oh, with a mask. We don't so, know. because it's so sought after, they're only doing certain releases, and it every, basically, people who pre-ordered not everyone's getting it now. Mm -hmm. There's like second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarters of it coming because of ship, um, chip shortages. But Gabe Newell, I wonder if I can find it in my arm. Um, Gabe! Has been caught hand delivering packages. <laughs> so he's wearing, that's the, the Steam Deck <laughs> merchandising. And Are you sure got, that's Gabe Newell? It is! Not, I don't know. That's the not mask. George R.R. R. Martin. It's. It, could it be that real cringy documentary making guy who's yeah, like? I but he's got that. okay. Whoever did he's this, got a cap. Could he's be got Santa the cap. Claus? But the glasses he's wearing is distinct Gaben glasses that he's been wearing recently. He's got the same beard. He looks a bit skinnier than I usually see him. Like he's a bit more. Hey. Yeah. I haven't seen another picture of him. Can you show me another picture of him where he looks fatter? Usually when you're sitting down, but I guess all the roles kind of just... Yeah, yeah, everything just goes up when you sit down. Well, it could... <laughs> I'll tell you that as yeah, a yeah. authority. <laughs> He's wearing a mask. It could be just some guy who knows what Gabe looks like and dressed mm -hmm. up like him, but I wouldn't be surprised if just, you know... So, so how much grunt does the Steam Deck have? Grunt? Yes. It's average in its hardware, but they've worked very hard on the software to make it... Oomph. So, better than Switch in terms of oh, hardware? Yeah. So, alright, alright. Um... Uh, so, play Steam games. Could it play Elden Ring? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It. Wow. They say the probably not. Obviously not in high settings. But. Um. Well, here's the thing. The, the thing with the Steam Deck because they knew it's underpowered. They've been working a lot on the software and searching on Linux mm -hmm. and on a. So you know, you've got like DirectX 11 and stuff, the different types of graphic mm -hmm. rendering. They're using a thing called Proton, which basically makes it render stuff a lot smarter. Okay. And so. If you run it as a standard Elden Ring launch, it will be a bit choppy, but if you use the experimental features, people are getting, you know, 120 frames. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've heard Elden Ring maxes out at 60. Is this false news? Oh, it would still be 60. But fake, they like... fake, fake news from Nathan <laughs> right here. Debunked <laughs> by Shad's previous, you know, research, di deep diving research, getting to the core of the matter. You are fake news, okay? Uh, I get, when it comes to... You know, video games and knowing one obscure random fact <laughs> that I remembered from a random review I ended up watching. Elden Ring's capped at 60. Elden Ring is capped at 60 FPS. And that review could have been wrong. <laughs> I, just... no, I think okay. you're right. No, because they've done that before with like, they had it capped at like 25 or 30 frames for the like original Dark mm. Souls. But Steam Deck is packing punch. Yeah. All I know is uh, Elden Ring is basically impossible to play at 4K. Because uh, I get like freezes and uh, lag like you wouldn't but it's like mm. can you play an ultra wide i don't know i don't know you got i the... tried it but it won't let me oh well then i guess not so oh. so i'm not at 1080p i'm in the one between 1080p like 1440p i think yeah, i'm yeah. playing it on and uh yeah that that run i can i can manage it on 1440p hmm. um but okay so steam deck that's pretty cool um hmm be really useful if you're in a place you have to move around. I would be tempted to get a like the Switch doesn't attract me, but having the openness of PC. Yeah. Playing... And you can put anything on there because it's basically yeah, a full like Windows I'll PC. Conan. What will Conan? Yep. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> you wouldn't get any work done, Shad. No. You just um, just, uh, just because Conan came up. Yep. I can't for me because of my preferences. I can't decide which is better between Conan and Elden Ring. 
That's okay. Have you been playing playing Conan recently? Uh, no, actually. No. I need to get back onto it. Yeah. Um, but I can't decide the difference. Because um, uh, uh, Conan gives you so many thing options mm. that um, Elden Ring doesn't. The combat does not, like, Conan combat is just garbage compared to Elden Ring. But on balance, it has so many cool features that mm. makes a really fun Well, work. one was made by the Japanese and one is owned by the Chinese. So which one do you like more? It wasn't originally. Like Funcom was bought out by a Chinese. Something. So they're owned by but them But then now. they just injected more money into the game, and yeah. so that's cool. But they're owned by them now. Yeah. So my point stands. Uh, on to the next bit of news. <laughs> um, okay, so like we're going to just get down to it, okay? We're going to have to be serious, okay? Like, can yeah. we get on to the serious political stuff? Yeah, we should. Okay, fine. Um, Lord of the Rings, uh, the Rings, Rings of, of power. power, thank you. Um, the Do super fan video. <laughs> and there's some new stuff that came out about it. So, look, shout outs really should be given to Desparu. Desparu, I've written his name here, yeah. He has been uh, smashing it. And what I really like, he's also been getting noticed by some of the other guys who are, uh, you know, really uh, pay attention to the pop culture yep. thing. And so, uh, Ryan from RK Outpost has noticed Desparu because he's been making great content. Yep, quartering too. Yeah, and the deep dives that he has been. Uh, um, uh, figuring out about the fan stuff, doing translations and stuff. Mate, yeah. legend. This is why you always have to name your sources, okay? Mm -hmm. Liberals are right about one thing, is that you should have your sources, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, but, okay, so for anyone who doesn't know, uh, they released the super fan video for Lord of the Rings showing, showing these people the trailers. It and... was the cringiest thing! Yeah. You could only find something more cringe on TikTok than this super fan stuff. No, TikTok has some good stuff. This was like... No, uh... this, no, this is cringe corporatism, man. This corporate crap is is the essence of where you get this sort of cringe. Um, and so they got three... Four, was it three or four people? I am offended that these people would even dare pose as super fans. Well, do you know why? They, they don't know that? crap! They got flown out to a castle. They were given tons of alcohol before filming the stuff. And then they're just like, hey, it's like Hollywood, you know? Just do what we tell you. Well, the uh, the super fan videos in the other languages, mm -hmm. like Desparo, you know, I haven't watched his full translation, but I watched his first kind of review where he uses Google Translate stuff mm -hmm. and he gets the gist. It's hilarious, like in one of them, they're not even talking about the trailer, they're just talking about the gig and the food and the um, location and mm. stuff. It's hilarious. Oh man. The, the cringiest out of them all is the English one though. Yep, that's oh, what I was oh, yeah. down. Oh. It was funny that when I watched it, they all looked like the same group. Like I thought being in different Yeah, parts talk of the world, about diversity. They were they all looked like the exact they same all friend look, group. But also the same ideology, there's no diversity of opinion there at all. That's nah. like yeah. That ain't the diversity they want, Chad. Like, there is no true diversity there. It's all, say, NPC, you know, uh, um, uh, consumers. Mm. NPC consumers that are just shield paid off, and uh, they reaching for whatever they could could compliment. What I love about it is that they can't even find anything of substance. Even these, like, corporate shills, they can only, like, the diversity. Yeah. Like... <laughs> And they got so much wrong. Like, one was even like, I'm glad that there's disabled people in it. Like, I me. want my sexuality, and my disability represented. And, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. One, I mean, there is disabled people in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Look at, is it, what's the orc's name who's got the ganky arm and eye and he has to limp? Oh, Gortz. Galmog or Galmog? No, it's like, it's a short name. It's like Gortz or something like that. But there is the disabled <laughs> like, characters in it, particularly. But you shouldn't need it. To, like, if you need to see yourself in a video like we did in our main Lord of the Rings video, mm. they're a bigot. Like, is, they're, if they're, they're so bigoted that they need to see themselves in it, it's like, wow, so you can't identify with people who look different to you? To you? That's some serious racism there. Is dwarfism a disability, technically? technically Not in uh, Lord of the Rings, but on a broader... In real life, yeah, technically it, it is, is right? classed as a disability. Because there was tons of people with literal dwarfism who were playing... Uh, like, they were playing the Hobbits and Dwarf when there was different shots from different angles. In yeah, the yeah, yeah. Movies. Um, just on that note, because we didn't really cover the Pink Peter Dinklage stuff and oh, the yeah. White Dwarf stuff. It's a bit old news now, but still, oh my goodness, that's a scummy movie. I think we there. did cover it. Like, so many, uh, you know, uh, people who have dwarfism mm. or any type of um, thing that makes them shorter, because there's actually other conditions that can restrict your growth, right? 
they basically get screwed. These are their major roles that they can get. Yeah. And so this was going to be a big opportunity for a lot of other, you know, little people, actors, I don't to know make a name. Uh, I just use a scientific term. Yeah, I know, dwarf, dwarfs, right? Dwarfism. Um, to uh, get seen and everything, and it would pay really good money as well, right? For each individual role, it's not like blockbuster money, but really good money. Yeah, it's a, you're in a Disney movie. You're making a hundred grand or more yeah. uh, in a role like that, easy. No, that's a small amount. Yeah. That's a, a hundred yeah. grand. Uh, Sean Astin took the lowest amount yeah. for, for uh, Sam, and he got paid 250 grand. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, per movie. So, uh, Pete Dinklage, right? He rose to the top by taking roles like that. Look at him in Elf. <laughs> he thinks he stands taller than the rest of them. And the whole point of his role in Elf was to make him a joke for being little and being confused as an elf. It was funny. It was really funny. Mm. Um, but that would be offensive. Yeah. And now just having dwarves in stuff is offensive to the point where it's screwing over dwarven actual people with dwarvism. It's like, yeah. that's, that, that is pretty scummy. Dinklage, mate. They do make a good point, though. Where's the autistic uh, queer <laughs> hobbit? I want to see the autistic queer hobbit. Well, to be fair, we didn't see Bilbo with any ladies around. Hmm. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But is like, it getting to the point that it would be phobic in some way to have uh, a, 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 a yes. tall person play a hobbit? No, it's not. It doesn't work like that. But they're short. They're little people. They need to real. They need real dwarves to pay play the hobbits. They don't have well, those proportions, but that's going That's the thing. They don't have those proportions. Yeah. Dwarfs uh, don't have those, those proportions. It's tricky. Well, no. Well, they had actual dwarves play um, uh, stunt shots, roles yeah. and stuff for hobbits and stuff. Yeah. Pretty regularly. It's tricky. Who knows? Who knows how they'll do it? But maybe they just want little any race that is, uh, I don't know, somehow. Uh, and I'm not saying like um, the way they think, but. Dwarves, in fantasy, are, there's a probably a, a easier connection you can make to uh, actual dwarven people in real life compared to orcs and who people then assume, you know, they supposedly represent in fantasy. <laughs> Where yeah. there's no connection versus a far more obvious connection between, you know, mm. dwarves in fantasy and dwarves in real life. But then again, liberals, they both connect them, they connect, connect mm. them all up. Oh, Unless it's like an elf... Or uh, even though, because the original word for elf in Old Norse meant... No one should be allowed to play an elf unless you're a real elf. No, but that's the thing, though. Elf in Old Norse, where it comes from, means a uh, white person. <laughs> elves, like real elves, should be as offended as black people are when they see blackface as when they see a human put on fake ears. Well, uh, that's a... Uh, uh, I'm in dangerous water here. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no one can play... Remember, no just, movie Bright? Just, remember Bright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? No one can play those black elves in that. Because that had a modern setting. There was black elves in it. No one cared. Yeah, It was exactly. its own thing, and it was a modern setting. You know? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, bugger off, people. So, anyway, the, um, the super fans. Was there anything else you wanted to mention about it? Uh, yeah, so... Or, or there, was, there was three other trailers, apart from the British one, all for different, um... Languages. Countries, languages, yeah. Different regions. And they were all shot-for-shot -shot remakes... Uh, and basically the gist is they forced these different groups of people to watch the same trailer in four different super languages. Super fans. Yeah, super fans. Force them to watch the same trailer in four, four different times over and over again to get all the different reactions. So, yeah, they saw the trailer four times and they were still hyped. I've seen it once and it looks like... This is the thing. One of the criticisms of the trailer was that they are trying to sell this movie based on its diversity by what we saw in the trailer because that's what they threw into it, okay? Uh... Now then, this super fan thing is a complete mask off moment for Amazon because any plausible deniability they had that they feel that the quality of this show is based on progressive diversity mm. is the fact that they sent out a, uh, a, a super fan, you know, promotional material for it where the only thing that they were praising about it was its diversity. And that's what Amazon thought was its main selling thing as the promotional material to bring it out. Which means it's not going to be about story. It's not going to be about being true to the, uh, delivering a quality product. They think it's going to be good just because it has their warped view of diversity, which is not true diversity at all. Yeah, it's not even the diversity that, that upsets anyone. It's they're purposely putting in their politics. Yes, it's the politics, the politics about it. We it's, hate the politics. But it's, all, it's the corrupt form of diversity that they think. That suddenly, just because people have different skin colours in the thing, it makes it better, which is an inherently racist belief. True racism. We're not talking about their, you know, warped view of racism. It was like, you know, 
<laughs> where they accuse everyone of being it just because uh, you liked a show with a white male protagonist. Oh, or just because like no, they they think that racism is just white people. You're but, inherently racist. Yeah, you're inherently yeah, basically exactly. No, it's literally that word. Yeah. For word so. uh, but no, true racism is judging people according to the color of their skin, not the content of the character, and they are literally judging this you know rings of power to be better because of skin color. That is racist mm. on an inherent level. Oh my goodness. I was actually watching the uh, the old Lord of the Rings red carpet and mm -hmm. interviews doing with Peter Jackson and, and all the other actors and it was such a breath of fresh air shad to see them be like, you know, Peter Jackson's like, oh, you know, I, I grew up reading the books and kind of thought, you know, I'd love to see this in, in cinema but never thought it'd be me. Got the opportunity to do it and so I read through the books again and the guy who plays Sam as well, he goes, you know, I want to pay, play the character most faithfully so I read through <laughs> the, the, the three books to make sure that I was portraying the character properly, understanding <laughs> Where it came from, doing history about Tolkien's work. Can I, can I pause you just there? Yeah. Compare that to the actors in Wheel of Time, where some legitimately said, "No, I have not read the books because I don't want their books to be, to yes. influence my betrayal." Of the That's character. funny. The writer did the same thing. What? The writer did the same thing. Oh yeah, I, That's with how much I know, yeah, I know, but because. In reality, he says he did, but with how much he got wrong, it's hard to believe he did, yeah. His name's Robert Jordan. That was the writer of the original one, right? Yeah, yeah. And the new one's Rafe Judkins. Mm -hmm. Maybe some Amazon exec just saw the initials and was like, oh, it's the same person, get him to do it. <laughs> and that's all the thought they put into it. <sighs> Sorry to cut you off, but, but it's no, just... It's just a contrast to see the yeah. difference between what it was like in the early 2000s to how it is, like, 20 years. Things are accelerating. Oh. <laughs> no brakes on this train. <laughs> All you can do is pull lever Hong Kong, that's it. Uh. Um, so, like, I have loved the um, uh, that fan reaction trailer for the reasons that Amazon probably doesn't like. And they they pulled it down because I think they realised that everyone who saw this is like, ah, thank you for telling us your agenda. And they're like, oh, crap. Because they know they are... Well, some good signs, but they're not going to change. But they have already seen that this is not going the way that they had hoped. Mm. And uh, they realise that the fans hate that this is a political thing, that it's being changed, everything like that. And that we see that they feel <laughs> the quality is the diversity and stuff. And they're like, oh, quick, go hide it, hide it. Because we want they want the fans to be fooled enough to watch it before they hate it. Too late now. Too late now. I Thank don't know, you know, like, we should just give it a chance and watch it when it comes out. If it's good, you know, I hope it's good. But I was, I, I'm waiting even... for a mask off moment is all, you know? <laughs> How's that feel? It's, it's not annoying even... because you keep bringing it up. What? I've already, we will go through it again and again and again. What do we keep going I, through? I actually am not ashamed of the way I approach Wheel of Time because I feel, um, for Amazon at least, there was enough precedent for me to give them benefit of the doubt. Now there's not. Okay. Okay. So now the Expanse is good, Invincible good. I was like, okay, let me see what they can do. Now it's pretty clear. So the precedent of the last seven years no, or so? No, no, no. Because this thing, there are the, a rare good show that can be made. And so I was hoping, because I love Wheel of Time, I really wanted Wheel of Time to be good. Mm. I, I'd love to see a good, at, you know, um, live action adaptation of Wheel of Time. And that was the hope that was... Now, yeah, now I'm years, now I'm please. dead inside and uh, they will never get the... Oh, yeah. I don't know if they ever get the benefit of the doubt from me again. You didn't get the message when 2022 rolled around? It said, abandon all hope, ye who enter. <laughs> Just abandon hope and you might be okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so, uh, next bit of... Next bit of if, my if my phone wants to turn on, next bit of news. Alright. Oh, uh, anyone have any local news? Well, I mean, yeah, I've been playing some Elden Ring. I've got a haircut and I've mm -hmm. been playing some Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. Nathan, you have a life and a wife. What's going on? What happens when you have a wife and a life? Oh, pain and misery. Okay, <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah. That was Oz pausing to just try and get... Appreciate my joke, people, because that was really funny. <laughs> no, no, no one like, else laughs at I'm you. I'm like, yeah, laughing at him, I'm miserable. Okay, so... Um, uh, yeah, so Elden Ring released its masterpiece that's on there. Um, Google Assist. Oh, my God. All right, this is new. What, 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 I haven't heard about this. Can, Someone... we just, can we show Shad? Sure, yeah. Hey, Google. I'm straight. Thank you for telling me. 
Being true to who you are is a beautiful thing. Do you have what you need to live your identity fully? <laughs> what the hell? Should I say yes? No, you should have said no. <laughs> You're awesome and beautiful. What's not to love? Oh my like goodness! Where are we in the world that we need an artificial intelligence to tell people you are like you're so great? It literally happened. Oh, the narcissism of our day and age knows no bounds! Demolition Man. Holy crap! It was Demolition Man. People are so sensitive and insecure that they need a friggin... Mm. Demolition Man predicted it. It was in that movie. Gosh. Where's Simon Phoenix when we need him? <gasps> oh... We know who Dr. Cocteau is. You will eat the books. Oh. You live in the pod. Alright. Thank you for depressing me. Now you're depressed? <laughs> Shad. Like, it, it pisses me off. Who does Google think that they need to uh, validate people's living? You're a freaking corporation, a search engine. Do your bloody job. You presumptuous assholes. You know what? I would have... And what gives me... They're scummy corporations that abuse human rights and free speech and everything like that. And they, they're posing in this so, such progressive thing for virtue when they are so scummy. Posing? Like they're deceitful? Like they're lying? Yeah. Why would progressives or people with money and power lie? Oh, gee, I wonder why. I wonder why, yeah. Oh. That's odd. Um, but yeah, so someone else... Was that, was that, was that it? Was no. that, that, that was it? No, there's... there's well, what, what, someone what else it? got a different answer. What did, what did they get? Someone else says, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope I can be an ally to you. And there is help available if you need it. Yeah, that's if you answer no, I think. Oh. Let's try it again. Let's try it. Try it. Hey, Google. I'm straight. Thank you for telling me. Being true to who... I'm sorry to hear that. I think you're awesome. And you are not alone. I hope I can be an ally to you, and there is help if you need it. Wow, wow, I, I can't. Wow. Don't ally with so, Skynet. If <laughs> someone says that you're having trouble with your identity, if they legitimately get any measure of consolation from a soulless, pre recorded voice, you need help. But also, that, I, uh, I say I'm straight, and then I say I, I don't. Feel don't feel safe, and like, okay, we can support you for the LGBTQ plus community. I don't think they would really help me out. What does happen if you say you're gay? Say I don't want Google to know that. <laughs> <laughs> that'll record it. That'll be. That'll be. I'll I'll get advertising, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> My Facebook would just. Mm. Okay, yeah, fine. Dude, think of all the excellent brands of lubricant that you'd be recommended. Uh, I'm gay. <laughs> And I don't, I don't have what I'm I need. Sorry to hear that. I think. So it's, it's the exact same thing, yeah. Identical. But then, to be fair though, right? Well, at least they're treating straight and gay as you know. Yeah, but like, <laughs> what? Then it asks for suggested like things to ask Google. And the first ones: Are you homophobic? <laughs> <laughs> the last thing Google is is homophobic. Oh, I kind of want to ask. What worries me is that. People will be educating themselves through crap like this. It's like, I wonder what homophobia means. I'll ask it, and they'll give the most bullcrap, progressively twisted and warped definition. Homophobia is when a white person disagrees with a gay person. <laughs> How are they linked? I, I, just, I just hate that. It's a contradiction of the term phobia. Mm. <laughs> it me a phobia means fear. Yeah. But they use it to mean... Uh, Dislike? I think it just means aversion. Yeah, I, I, I just... I hate the destruction of language. Yep. And civilization. Who could be destroying the languages? <sighs> Alright. Um, oh, finally in our entertainment news, there's a war going on. <laughs> Didn't see that lead in, did you? <laughs> One, two. <laughs> I disavow. Disavow. Yeah, there's a war going on. Um, yeah. You know how, for a while, everyone's been feeling this ominous feeling like something's coming right around the corner, I can feel it. But we haven't really known what. Well, it's a lot closer now. We're but just at the time. It's just another one of those times in which Alex Jones was right. Yep. He literally said in October of last year... <laughs> um, have you seen it? <laughs> Oz told me. And you said, oh, sure he did. You didn't believe me when I said it. 
No, I, I was asking, how did he know? <laughs> to be fair, immediately before I told you that, we were talking about predictive programming and a <laughs> yeah. bunch of other stuff. It was the look. It was the interdimensional elves that told him clearly. They no, 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 he hunt. doesn't smoke DMT. It wasn't them. <clears throat> that's oh, that's happened. right. He was accusing the government of colluding with them. I mean, if he's right about everything. So, 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 now, this is the thing. When he was on the Joe Rogan thing, right? He said that, which sounds crazy. And then Joe Rogan actually interpreted what he meant and it sounded far more reasonable. What, uh, like, Alex Jones's half of his difficulty is the way he frames stuff. Turns out it was the US government experimenting with DMT yeah. because of the joint hallucination it caused. There's a recurring joint hallucination that can happen in DMT where you get visited by elven looking they're, they're beings. They're called the machine elves. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is crazy, right? Joint hallucinations. Yeah, that is What crazy. makes them joint? Is it inception? How are these people sharing a hallucination? Well, I mean, I believe that there's a higher spiritual plane of existence, mm. and so that answers that. But it's if you don't, if you, from there. if you don't have a um, a, a type of metaphysical uh, belief at all, mm. then that that reality, that joint hallucination thing, is like okay, that's that's get that yeah. weird people. But out. here's the thing: they're not elves. These are demons, people. Demons. They're us interdimensional demons from a lower plane of existence. <laughs> Seriously, that's what he's... Yeah, they right. are, and, and they are. But it's the way he frames it that sounds crazy when you say that, like, well, actually, the US government experiment DNT, joint hallucinations, is like, ah, oh, well, that's like, that's believable and plausible, you know, that like, people would want to experiment and find out about this stuff. Uh, he does go a bit further to say that they're being corrupted by the, the demons and um, told to, to Okay, to do. okay, okay, now wait a minute. But hang on, if the government's gone as far to admit, like, yes, we're doing this, and yes, these are the results we're finding, no, then we're not, they're not making us evil, even though all of Alex Jones's other <laughs> crazy predictions... Well, I believe that it can be uh, different planes of existence, and Absolutely. there could be corrupting entities there. Abs Satan on Earth, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh... Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, Oh yeah, there's a war game. There's a war. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. I mean, the whole situation sucks. I, I think um, uh, the loss of light, the display, like, we're not a political channel. We just need to, uh, I think, we'll acknowledge it. The thing that's... Well, well, we are a political channel. Yeah, not in this level, though. We do it when it's when it is related. Pop like, culture. Pop culture. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about crappy TV shows yeah. being made. Not, oh, look, World War Three. <laughs> I <laughs> mean... above our pay grade. It's funny that a lot of times conflicts like this can feel uh, um, distant and disconnected from you and stuff. Uh, and uh, you, look, that's the reality of life. I don't blame people for feeling disconnected because it is happening on you know so far away and everything. But when you see the human cost, that's you know, it's, um, pretty... I don't want to get into the politics of what's causing it or the underlining issues. I just think the fact that there is open conflict and there is something that caused me to have... Uh, a closer awareness of what's happening uh, over in Ukraine. And it's that um, there's a company I've collaborated with a number of times called Steel Mastery. They made my iconic brigandine. And they've been, like, charming, great to work with, everything like that. They're a Ukrainian-based business. They're mm. basically going to be... I don't know what's going to happen with them. My heart's breaking for them. These are really nice people. Um, they've literally sent me new... Like, in the recent Shadowversity video, I'm wearing the new brigandine. No, Not no. Brig I'm wearing the new Gambison. And uh, I, I, when we filmed it, right, I uh, didn't realize that, like, because I knew that they were based in Europe. Not, mm. I didn't re like connect that specifically in Ukraine. Um, but I got those. I, I, I have this really cool new brigandine. It's a titanium brigandine, and I got it to make a dedicated video review. The business might not even exist anymore. Um, and these are great people. And so. Uh, I don't really know what to do with that anymore, but um, separate to that, I'm, my heart's breaking for these people that I know that are suffering from this crap, and uh, so I just have to watch what happens, unfortunately. I don't think it's going to turn into World War Three or a nuclear war. I'm hoping it'll be resolved. Like, it's obviously not peaceful now, but things can be resolved. Um, before it gets worse, is what I'm trying to say. It's going to turn into computer hacking. They're going to compromise computer systems and infrastructure mm. across the entire Western world. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, our future relations are going to be an interesting thing. Um, it doesn't set a uh, peaceful, uh, you know, stage for certain relations going into the future. What do you but mean certain relations? Between, uh, you know, Russia and the Western world and stuff like that. Oh, well, I mean, they've always been at each other's throats. Yeah, it's getting worse, though. We wished it would have gotten better, but... Hmm. Unfortunately, corruption is a real thing, you know? So, 
we won't, that's probably where we'll leave that. Um, we're going to try and stick to talking about pop culture more as, uh, not because we're ignorant of what's happening in the world, but as a means for escape, so people can get a break of the horrible stuff happening Yeah, because everywhere else, that's all you say. Yeah, um, and so that's why Shadowversity it, like, will be going on as normal. Um, uh, e like, even though that, I, I, I don't know what I'll do about the Still Mastery thing, um, so maybe that might cause me to make some type of statement. You but could only help them what if you did a video called Best Asymmetrical Warfare Tactics? Nah, nah, nah. Um, see, that, I feel that would be disrespectful. Like, really? Yeah. You can share them some oh, no, useful information. The no, still one, I, I couldn't teach them more than what you know you could learn. Because um, uh, like, I'm not a modern warfare. I'm a medieval one. And also, I don't want to profit off I don't know, something that's mm. terrible like this happening. And so what I think I'll do with... Um, uh, and this this brigandine is awesome like it's one of the best that they've ever made i hope that they'll be able to get back on track uh still mastery and when they do i'll save the review for them to try and give them a big boost in views and you know yeah and help their business get back on track hopefully that'll that'll do what they need to do hmm. um but uh separate to that yeah we'll, we'll try and be business as usual uh, as a uh, escape hopefully um, until the russians come here well australia would be screwed I, for one, welcome... And it's not going to be Russia. Rewards. It's going to be China. Yeah, China. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, not if India has anything to say about it. We'll team up with India. We'll team up with Japan. Love India. Yeah. I love you too, my brothers. <laughs> Hello, my friend. Nah, India is awesome. Like, yeah. they got great food. they got some cool history, great weapons, everything like Coolest that. movie industry. A and the movie industry, I don't like the dancing Bollywood stuff, but, you but they make some lights. of the most hilariously awesome action but, yeah. movies. And they're so ridiculously over the top. I yep. bloody love it. India's awesome, man. And Japan. Dude, <laughs> get that rising sun out. We're going to need it when China come. Yep. It's tall. That'll be it. Australia, Japan, and India. Australia, with the largest land mess out of them all, will be the weakest partner in that relationship by far. <laughs> Wait, Japan good now? <laughs> yeah, Japan's good. Cool. No, but like. I know World, World War II bad, but. World Japan, War III, they're good. World War III, they'll be oh, good. That's a redemption story. It is. Japan's redemption story is actually really awesome. It that's what happens when notes. you inject some awesome Western democracy into a country. You'll see it prosper. I think we injected several thousand nanograms of uh, uranium <laughs> into the atmosphere. That was just the kickoff that thing. That could But after that, Western capitalistic, free market democracy, like, if you uh, just just have a look at the economies of North Korea and South Korea. <laughs> like, but here's the thing, right, Shad? Well, look at what World War I did, get a, did I, for our world. I get a little bit annoyed when people are always ragging on imperialism and the expansion of Britain, stuff like that. Mm. I mean, the quality of life, in all honesty, in places that um, Britain colonised, Australia, India, um, Japan is uh, not Britain, but uh, they're the same principles of like free market and yep. uh, capitalism China and stuff like that. China as well, that. we took industry into China. South Korea, like, look at how poverty is reduced, uh, economic prosperity has risen, things. Um, and uh, there's a, there's a, uh, this is, it'll be too blue, we're going to go that way, but I find it interesting the discussion on um, British imperialism and the impact it's had globally. It was the nicest imperialism. <clears throat> That's the thing. That's what people miss is like, they rag on British imperialism so much, and, if, and this is the reality. If it wasn't them, it was going to be someone else. Yeah. And you did not want Germany to win the imperial, um, you know, uh, race at all. What did the Germ... Never mind, actually. Uh, yeah. Or, <laughs> like, or the uh, Arabs, or like, the... Seriously, anyone. I thank God that Britain colonised yeah. Australia and I got brought into this. The group. only empire to willingly sign away its territory. And willingly give up slavery. Yeah. Without, like... Oh, they're evil. Ugh. Being on time and courteous is white supremacy. <laughs> the subversion that people are like, oh, how they're trying to upend historical truth. It just freaking annoys me. Man. Last bit I saw, you know mm -hmm. the worst possible people to be subjugated by? The French. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> oh, hello, slave. Get down in the working the field. The imperialistic um, intents of many countries, I would have been, imagine if Japan, and this is the mindset of Japan pre-World War II, right? Holy crap! Holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> my <laughs> shin that be a freaking nightmare! Yeah. Like, ragging on Britain. No, trust me, out of all of you wanted Britain to win. Thank God they did, because holy was, crap. If it was Japan, the entire world would have collectively said, Only China! <laughs> 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 I do it, like, 
Sometimes I wonder, like, you know, um, Edo era or Meiji era Japan, mm. looking at Japan now, and the samurai just <laughs> seeing, like, cat pillows, just going, what have we become? Come <laughs> 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 in, No! <laughs> <laughs> Insolence! <laughs> You're ashamed! Your ancestors! <laughs> oh, some good old fashioned racism. Or they get corrupted from it's like, <laughs> what is this? Hentai! Ooh! 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 <laughs> Give her me my waifu! She is my waifu! <laughs> we, love, we love Japan, we do. That cracked it for me. <laughs> Uh, we love the Japanese. We actually do, and so, yeah. It's great that they put all their aggressive nature into their sexuality and became just as crazy in a different way. There are actual big problems in Japan with um, their, oh man, their uh, birth rates are not good in Japan. Yeah. Uh, they, are, they have some big issues to face, and part of it is... their culture around marriage and sexuality, they're, they're getting screwed over. Yep. And I think, and, like, bad types of anime is contributing to it where some guys are happy with their waifus and they're not getting married and trying to build productive I have know, always marriages. said this it's why I've avoided anime <laughs> nothing limits your odds in the gene pool like being a fan of anime okay you are the surest candidate of dying alone if you're into anime second only to furries okay I do I disavow but I think it can be a gateway into the bad types of uh, Japanese subculture that could then have very detrimental effects on your views of sexuality and relationships and stuff. Yeah, Japanese are odd bunch, but they're our Pacific cousins mm -hmm. when we're not at war. Lots I love about Japan, not to say, you know, and not, look, we're as critical about ourselves. You should hear the amount of crap we rag on Australia yeah. and our government because we're all lazy, crap. racist, you know, <laughs> led by evil people. <laughs> we're literally still a prison colony, you know? Oh, it's depressing. Yeah, we're still yeah. Con There's actually an underlining cultural uh, reality that's a result of us being started out from being a um, slave colony. Yeah. And it still exists today. And it's the fact that it's annoying, but Australians have never, as a people, needed to fight for our rights collectively. Like, the we only... Once. The few times got crushed Eureka horribly, Stockade. like the Eureka Stockade. Ned Kelly. Um, exactly. And a lot of our, you know, foreign uh, watchers probably aren't aware of it elements of the Australian history like that that got crushed savagely. Uh, the Australian people have been uh, taught to submit, basically, to state authority. Not this one. Well, well yeah. because we have it... I'm, not saying, I'm not saying not, this, this doesn't apply to all Australians, but collectively, it's the reality. What we need is a thousand Ned Kellys and a thousand Eureka Stockades. Mm. And then we'll see how that goes. The thing is, though, we can complain pretty hard. And we, there, there's been, you know, protests and, and stuff where we kick there against the... That's protests. And we get mm. shot with rubber bullets and yeah, pepper spray and tear gas. And then everyone's like, just forgets it. Mm. And, 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 everyone, and everyone asks, all the normies ask, man, what are they even protesting about? Mm. <laughs> what are they complaining about, man? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, anyway we're, get, like, this, we, we're, we're not... I hate all. Australia mainstream media. Australian mainstream media news is just such... It's all pro... Like... You brag on ABC, Channel 10 is like oh, just yeah. as worse. Yeah, they're all Murdoch going. Seven, yeah. horrible. Nine was the one that only had Channel 9. Some hope, but it's gone pretty bad. Because mm. um, old good old Carl Stefan had, had some good takes. Not Lisa. Oh, sorry, just Carl, but Carl and Lisa were a good team. Gosh. They were a good team. She, uh, not only she fallen from grace, now, yeah. she uh, was hiding it the whole time. Yep, but mm. Carl, he was a Carl hero. legend. Yeah, is he still alive? I think he's still in the TV show. Oh, okay. But mainstream TV in Australia sucks so bad that only the most boomer of boomers watch it still. Yeah, and mm. like if, your if I see it. anything with ABC on it on YouTube, I'm like, skip. Yeah, anyone who watches ABC is an idiot. He's he, <laughs> ran, he ran away, Nathan. Oh, it's the intern. Yeah. The only mainstream media source in Australia that I'll consider watching it's not on the mainstream TV. Um, no, no, this, and I don't always, like, I never take them as wholly authoritative or anything, but at least that they're, it's, um, Sky News Australia. Ah, they're still Murdoch owned. Uh, no, I think someone else owns it. They're, they're, they're owned by Murdoch. a different entity than Sky News, um. Pretty but, sure it's Murdoch. But anyway. Anyway, um, you know who's the best news? Pauline Hanson. <laughs> on on the, the Please Explain cartoon. Have but, you seen that? Um, uh, I've seen this, I've seen clips, but... 
what we're really trying to get at is that um, sometimes it's fun to just make fun of yourself, and that's why I think it's fun to just make fun of stereotypes of Japan and other cultures as well, everything because they exist, and you know, people say st like stereotypes are bad, bigoted, and everything like that until you experience them. Mm. You know, it, is it a stereotype that's racist when people say that Asian people are bad drivers? And I'm not saying it's a universal truth, you can get good Asian drivers, but on the whole, you might think it's bad until you go to an Asian country and experience their driving. Yeah, yeah. Asian people are not bad drivers until one runs you over. <laughs> and, then... and then you might see, oh, there might have been some vein of truth that helped sprout that, you know, Dude, I stereotype. Once, I once almost got hit by an Asian driver, man. And do you know what? He, he looked like Freaking, he was high. I went to the Philippines, right? And yeah. I took a taxi and I thought I was going to die. I'm not kidding! Yeah. Driving, taking over into oncoming traffic. And their roads are awful. Like, they don't have, like, you know, drains. They have ditches that look like open, gaping holes into the crust of the earth on either side of their road. That's what they have. The Philippines is Mordor? Oh, it's horror. I was like, I thought I was going to die, man. And then there's, you go into just outside, uh, there's trash on the streets and stuff. And look, I got nice beaches, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to Japan. I stopped off in Philippines, went to Japan and their roads are so narrow. And then you went to West Australia and everything's so wide. I know. It's like, where is everything? It's like. <laughs> It's such a wasteland that no one wants to live in. They try and take up as much space as possible. We're free-range prisoners over there. Because <laughs> yeah. if we try to escape, it's a thousand miles of desert in every direction. Otherwise, water. <laughs> Filled with sharks and, and jellyfish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. <sighs> oh, hey, sorry. Speaking of self-making fun of, uh, we might need to cut this. We have a plan of a skit for you. Basically, like, it's called Greetings, I'm Shad. Where every time you interact with someone, you always say, Greetings, I'm Shad. And today, we're going to have a, like, just like, for example, you go to a drive through you're like, Greetings, I'm Shad. Today, I'm going to have a Chicago Whopper. And then as you go to leave, you're like, And until next time, farewell. And you crank your theme music up and then speed off. That would be pretty funny, actually. Uh, anyway. <laughs> the, the, the thing that sold me is the crank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, that's all the news. We did get political, despite Shad saying no, we won't get political. Well, no, we didn't dive into the my new show, the yeah. causes. We just who, made fun of who's races. justified, who's not, and all that stuff. I have my views. Don't get me wrong. I oh, mean, too. <laughs> Oz and I had like what a two-hour de yep. debate. It was only an hour. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and it went by so quick. But that's not what we like. I said we. I only get political mostly, especially on Night's Watch, when it, you know, it's we're forced to because other people politicize stuff. Mm. And uh, and it's given me the justification to make Shadowversity even more apolitical than what yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, Here at Night's Watch, we don't start wars, we join them. <laughs> and hopefully one day we'll end them. Mm. But I think that's, is that's everything I that's, use. Uh, I'll, I'll concede that's the end You're of the misusing year. it. Okay. Save it for the right okay. time. I, I helped discover it, okay? From my friend on Discord, okay? Okay? Here's the thing, people. China. Okay, never mind. I'm just looking. <laughs> yeah. So, Shad, you always love signing us off, even though we have our own way of doing it. Yes! You go ahead and sign us off. Thank you for joining us on Nile News, and until next time, we'll see you on the next watch. Now, that was awful, because I was. I got. I, uh, I get so confused between see you on the next watch and until next time. Til stay next watchful. Time. Farewell. No, stay watchful. Okay. Stay on watch. <laughs>